Well, g'day curd nerds. Welcome to another Ask the Cheese Man, where you can learn about all things home cheese making and ask all your questions that are burning uh, in your brain that you want to uh, get an answer to. Well, I'll try my best anyway. Uh, we'll wait a little bit for people to turn up. Uh, we already have the moderator today, so that's a good start. G'day, Kep. How are you? Um, and uh, then we'll start off the show. So talk amongst yourselves. So Kim, are you um, are you there on the chat? And how's the audio? Oh, Jason, g'day. How are you? Welcome to the show. Uh, Kim says, yep, she's here, but uh, nothing about the audio. Oh, it's great. All right. Thank you, honey. <laughs> that's uh, that's uh, great to know. All right, so we've got 14 watching, so let's start the show, shall we? Well, g'day, curd nerds. G'day, curd nerds. Well, g'day, curd nerds. Well, g'day, curd nerds. Well, g'day, curd nerds. Well, g'day, curd nerds. And I'm back. Um, we've got a few more people popping up, so g'day to Art. Uh, hello to Stephen. Hello to uh, it's Ariel. I think that's how you pronounce it, from Uruguay. That's a long way away. Um, still in the Southern Hemisphere. we got uh, Ben. G'day, Ben. How are you? Um, nice chat we had, although brief, the other day. G'day, Mick. How are you? From Tasmania. Uh, we got uh, Guada from Argentina. G'day. And Dave, we've got Action Bastard, he's back again. G'day, mate. Eduardo, how are you? Uh, David, uh, we got uh, Kai Dorgia, Dorgo, oh, it's hard to say. Varun, how are you? Good to start. All right, so let's start with the questions. Um, we should have a action pack show today, as long as you keep the questions flowing, as always. Um, I don't have any extra little videos or anything like that. Um, but first of all, I'd like to point out that uh, if anybody wants to support the show as it's going along, um, or uh, just in general, don't forget there's a super chat down there, a little dollar sign, where you can um, put a comment that costs, I think it's $2 US, something like that, or $2 Australian, whatever the $2 is in your country, uh, currency, and, uh, and that'll pop up and be highlighted for everybody. But that goes directly to us. YouTube get about that much, which is pretty cool. Anyway, we'll talk about other ways to support support the show at the end of the show, um, but we'll carry on uh, now. The uh, the cheese that I've made this week, well, last weekend, was um, uh, how do you say it? Um, Saint, uh, sorry, Saint Paul. It's a Saint Paul and slant ochre, so it's a washed rind, washed curd cheese. So two methods. Um, and uh, I'm hoping to have some video up on the weekend. It won't be the whole thing with taste test, obviously, because it takes, uh, I think it's about two months until it's fully ripened, but uh, I'll have at least the beginning part of how to make that cheese um, up by Sunday morning, so that'll be good fun. Okay, so let's uh, kick off with the questions. So Eduardo said, uh, is it okay to keep my cheese in the fridge or somewhere else? Uh, so, Eduardo, is that when you're maturing the cheese or just keeping it normally? Um, they, you can keep it in the fridge normally. Everybody else does. Um, but for maturing, uh, yeah, you can, but it slows down the rate of maturation. So it'll take a couple of months longer, unfortunately, at four degrees, and you might not get the flavours you're expecting because <clears throat> the uh, starter cultures... Um, 
have either gone gone dormant is the usual routine, or they haven't converted um, the fats into um, uh, the flavours that we know and love. Um, David says my videos are a gem. Thank you very much, and everybody else, lots of love your videos. Thank you very much, guys and girls. Um, it's lovely to see you here on the channel. All right, so Mickey D says, do you have any note books? on all the types of cultures and what they do. I actually do have a link. Um, I'll see if I can just, let me just dig that up for two seconds. This may hopefully not interrupt the broadcast. Uh, where are we? All right, I think I've got it. This is a, I'll just put a link in there, there. This is a guide, a culture's guide, and it's from Mary Carlin's uh, site. She's a, she's a cheesemaking author and home cheesemaker or professional cheesemaker. And there are a lot, a lot of uh, starter cultures and bacterias in that guide, uh, and that'll help um, you figure out the different types and what they're used for and all that sort of stuff, uh, and the different strains of bacteria. So... Uh, good question, Mick. So hopefully that helps. Um, ben has, Ben said, um, will you make a video on App, Appenzella? I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, I will put that down on my list. So many cheeses, not enough time. Uh, people have been asking for ochre for ages, so I had to find a... Um, that's why I went out and, and made that last weekend. Mind you, everybody's been asking for brie, but I've had one brie failure, so I'm a bit hesitant to dip my toe back in the water again for that one. Okay, next question is... Um, uh, Steve says, have you ever made a cheese using kangaroo's milk, or is it even possible? I don't think it is. You're going to catch them first and uh, keep them standing still long enough to milk them. Um, but, yeah, look, they're a mammal. They produce milk. I don't know if it would be um, any good, uh, but uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Um, I'm not going to make it, personally. You have to, like I said, you've got to catch them first. Um, Dylan says, um, oh, sorry, Ed, Eduardo says, Gavin, you're the best. Thank you very much. Um, Dylan says, Gavin, hope your day is well. I have zero experience with cheese making. I watch your videos all the time. What is a great cheese goal? Um, a cheese goal as in an achievement. Uh, to make your first cheese is a good start. Um, uh, and start off, Kim should have a link to a video there somewhere around beginner's cheeses and uh, which ones you should tackle first without uh, you know having to buy lots of uh, equipment and uh, have a cheese fridge and stuff like that. Uh, William said, how did you get into cheese and why cheese? Why not cheese? Um Look, I grew up on a dairy farm, the, the short story, go and buy my um, book, Keep Calm and Make Cheese, and the whole story's there. Um, the links are in the description below in this video, um, and the, there's an ebook format, so you can get that. Um, sorry not to answer it, but it'll take me too long. There's a whole chapter on it, why I started making cheese. Um, Sidoraga, if I said that right, um, I've asked you about restoring the recipe of cheese if you've lost the recipe. In case, in case if I remember the flavour, how is cheese and how cheese is look like? I don't understand the question. Uh, next one. Um, Action Bastard says, um, have you looked into splitting cracking cheese versus cutting them? I know your recent provolone was a struggle. Yeah, look, I've got the little knife things. Um and I didn't realise that the provolone was going to be so much trouble uh, to get it open. But uh, I dare say bigger wheels are, are more of a problem. Um, so, yeah, that's a, that's a bit of an issue. Um, but, yeah, look, that it wasn't that much of a struggle. It was a struggle because it was awkward shape uh, more than anything else. I knew that it was the paste was moist in the middle. I knew I just had to get through that rind, so... Yeah, that's uh, that's something that I would have to do. Um, uh, Ronnie says, "Have you ever tried Cassan Canastra cheese? Canastra cheese? No, I have not. 
Let me just do a quick Google search on that. Canasta. <laughs> um, all I've got is a card game on Google. And no. Where does it originate from is a good start. Um, no, I don't know. Um, Casey says, I'm sorry, Steve has a serious question. I did answer him somewhere. Um, and uh, Benzo Pyrene, what's the difference between using citric acid and cultures in making mozzarella? Um, using citric acid is the, it's not a cheats method, but it's a quick method. It acidifies the, uh, the milk quickly. Uh, that's why it's called quick mozzarella. And it brings the pH right down so you can stretch the curd. You still need to add uh, rennet, of course. Uh, but you don't get the same flavour profile um, as you do with long-form mozzarella, which takes a while using starter cultures. The starter cultures also um, lower the pH, uh, which makes it more acidic. Uh, so they do the same thing, but one takes a long time, one takes a very short time. That's the difference. Um, Ike says, hey, Gavin, quick question. I made Havarti and everything went fine. After I put the weight on it overnight, I got up in the morning to find they had fell off. Uh, not good. So I've had no idea how many hours it was without the weight. I simply pressed it for seven hours. Will it turn out fine? Do you think something will go wrong? Um, probably not. Uh, if it looks like the right shape, uh, then it might have a little bit more moisture in it than it should. But uh, time will tell. Um, just make sure that you, um, after air drying, just wax. Um, and hopefully, sorry, hopefully you've brined it by now and it's still held its shape. Um, and uh, let me just think. Yeah, so hopefully you've brined it by now and it's now air drying. Once it's air dried, don't forget to, um, to wax or backpack it. and It'll hold its shape either way. Hopefully no moisture will collect in the bag. Anyway, it's not a disaster. No cheese is a disaster. Uh, Try Hard says, have you ever tried vinegar cheese? Yes, it's called ricotta. Very similar. And if you then press it, it's ricotta salada and add a little bit more salt. So that's vinegar cheese. Uh, what do you think of pepato cheese? Uh, pepato. Um, yeah, so pepato cheeses are basically cheeses with pepper in them, uh, Casey. And yeah, they are very nice. I've made a... Uh, Romano Papato and I think an Asiago Papato. Um, so Kim, if you can pull up the video for Asiago Papato, that'd be fantastic. Uh, and uh, that'll answer Casey's question. Uh, Mick says first run of pot sir was successful on the but the motor and the blade. What? Hang on, let me just see. Sorry, Mick. Um, first run. Or oh, Potzera su succeeded on the motor, but failed on the blades. Made a new set. I'm about to try. We'll send video. Motor works well. That's fantastic news, Mick. I'm uh, I'm very proud that you've taken the next step and started doing some ingenious things with your cheese making. Certainly beat standing there for ages and ages um, stirring. That's for sure. Okay, looks like Kim's had some fun there with somebody. Uh, Varun says, I've heard about cheese from donkey's milk. Is it real or just a hoax? Uh, no, it's real. Um, there's even reindeer cheese, camel cheese. There's so many different types of cheeses from mammals. Uh, they've ever made cheese uh, from humans, uh, <laughs> from express breast milk. So, yes, there are lots of cheeses out there. They're not commercial cheeses. Somebody's just made them on a whim. But I'm pretty sure that donkey's milk, uh, donkey's milk cheese is... Um, is quite frequent in the, I think it's in the Balkans and in Greece, northern Greece, Macedonia, that sort of area, Bulgaria maybe. Uh, but there wouldn't be a lot of it, not a lot of donkeys out there. Um, Gahada says, uh, thanks for all the recipes and videos. I did try a quick mozzarella and it was great. Uh, and it was great. The thank you. Oh, thank you. Okay, cool. Thank you very much. Peter Brown says, can I make sherv cheese using cow's milk by adding lipase? I've had problems using homogenized goat's milk. Um, yeah, it wouldn't be called sherv then, Peter. It would be called cream cheese. But yeah, you can make cream cheese with uh, lipase added in. Uh, it'll give a little bit of a pecan flavor, not too much. 
Um, certainly won't have the same texture as uh, Sherv because that I couldn't believe it when I made it. When I made Sherv for the first time, the texture of the cheese was just so smooth. It was just, it wasn't as, oh, it's, it's difficult to explain unless you've got the two together. So you've got cow's milk, cream cheese, and then Sherv, which is basically goat's milk, cream cheese. The two are different. They're like, dare I say, chalk and cheese. <laughs> But yeah, the, the the textures are so different. So it won't be the same. It'll be, like I said, cream cheese with a little bit of a tart flavour, which is okay. Maybe what you're after. Um, Tryhard says, oh, I've already answered that question. Um, Art says, uh, Gavin, do you know how long will last a package of uh, penicillin Roke 40? Culture, once it's open, kept in the fridge. Um, yeah, our problem with um, starter cultures is if you leave the packet open in the freezer, uh, they live in the freezer, not the fridge. Probably won't last long uh, if you've got it in the fridge. They need to be at least minus 18 degrees. Uh, they are a freeze-dried product. Best of all is to leave them in a... Uh, if you can get those little sterile jars, you know, the sample jars, uh, that's what we ship with all our cultures. Uh, and you simply empty the packet of the culture into the, in the little jar, screw the lid on tight, makes an airtight seal, put it in the freezer is the best place, and then it'll last um, at least to its best before date, if not longer. I've been using cultures that are uh, a year past their best before date, as long as they've been kept in the freezer since you've got them. So usually they're, they're fine. Um, Dylan has asked, favourite major cheese brands in Australia? Um, look, I do like King Island Dairy um, as, a, as a dairy of, uh, of fine cheeses. Uh, I did like Tim Boone until it got commercialised. Um, I also like, uh, well, we're going to a, oh, I like um, Meredith Dairy, uh, which is a goat's cheese, uh, goat dairy um, near Ballarat here in Victoria. They make some fantastic um, sherv and goat's cheese. That's really good. Um, so, yeah, so they're really good. And, um, uh, well, there are a few. Now, Kim and I are actually going to a festival um, called the Mould Festival in Melbourne. I think it's on the 2nd of September. So we're very excited about that. It's on a Saturday uh, from 11 till something. All the tickets are sold out, unfortunately. I think I mentioned it a bit, couple of months ago. So if you didn't get your tickets, then, um, then yeah, that's unfortunate. But we're going along. We're going to do a little bit of a, a vlog of all things. Um, just to show people what the festival was about and that sort of thing. And I'll pop it up on the channel. It should be very exciting. Uh, but there should be lots of artists and cheesemakers there. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, next question. Um, uh, Action Bastard, if you were make your own pizza, what cheese would be your preference? Uh, look, we've made... Um, I've got a pizza oven out the back that I made myself. There's actually a video on the channel. Totally unrelated to cheese making, but I left it there because it was getting some good views. Uh, it was from when my channel was other things, not specifically cheese making. Um, but what we do, I make um, quick mozzarella and uh, pop little rounds of that on top, and that makes a delicious cheese for pizza. And a sprinkle of um, shredded tasty cheese uh, that you just buy from the supermarket. That seems to be all right. But since we've had provolone, and I made that, I would probably put some of that on as well. Uh, seems to melt okay, so it's pretty good. Asman asks, can I re-wax cheese once opened? And uh, what is the make of your vac packer? Uh, yes, you can re-wax cheese once it's opened. Uh, and the make or model of my vac packer is a Sunbeam suit, um, Food Saver. Fun. I'll start again. Sunbeam Food Saver, um, fairly common brand. It's not commercial. So if you're going to do lots and lots of cheeses, it's not the one for you. For home cheesemaker like myself, yes, no problems at all. Uh, it seals well. It sucks all the air out, so I never have any problems. Um, thanks, Kim. Um, uh, Canastra is a type of cheese from Brazil. Uh, I couldn't see it on a quick Google search, but I'll um, I'll check that out later. <coughs> okay, uh, Mickey D says, um, on your vids on camembert, 
Did you not mention when Geo Trichon goes in is at the same time as the other cultures? Yes, it is. Um, I made a couple of Camembert videos, so um, yeah, that goes in at the same time. There's only a tiny amount of Geo Trichon. It just stops uh, skin slip, and it also prepares the surface of the cheese. Um, uh, it it uh, raises the pH, so it makes it more alkaline or neutral. It actually makes it neutral, about pH 7 to 6.4 roughly, which is perfect for penicillium candidum to grow. So that's why you add that. Um, where am I up to? I've skipped ahead so far now. Um Where are we? Um, which what is a good cheese for beginners? Uh, Kim's already posted the link of that one. Sorry about that. Uh, Kep, um, is the amount of rennet you use dictated by the type of cheese or the amount of milk you use? Um, because I see lots of your videos, two point five, whether it's four or ten liters. Uh, yeah, look, it depends on the type of cheese. If you're making a fresh cheese, you want it to coagulate fairly quickly. Um, however, with the uh, 10 litre varieties that I make, uh, yeah, they, they, they coagulate a lot slower. Uh, with the fresh cheeses like, um, well, Camembert and, and Bloomy Goat, not fresh cheeses, but um, you need them to be quite firm when you ladle them out or you'll see what happened in the Bloomy, Bloomy Goat Blue um, that it started to go through the hoop. Um, so you need it fairly firm, uh, fairly quickly. But... Uh, yeah, there is a there is a reason there are variations. Uh, usually, it's the amount of milk, um, and uh, two point five mil or half a teaspoon, if I remember rightly, is about right for ten liters of milk, uh, depending on the IMCU of your rennet. So I use two hundred IMCU uh, rennet, which is Chimax Plus, uh, which is made by C H R Hansen. Uh, and that seems to work fine. I don't have any issues with that. It's um, uh, microbial rennet. Um, Casey says, thank you. Well, thank you. Um, PFC Ben W says, hey, I don't know what, uh, if this is the right name, but could you make a Limburger-like cheese? I would like to see your face when you first eat your own Limburger cheese. Yes, my facial expressions are known to please, apparently. Um Limburger is uh, one of those cheeses that are extremely stinky. Um, I do have lots of recipes for them. And you probably hear dogs barking in the background there. There's somebody at the door. Um, but Kim's going to have to grab them. <laughs> um, so, yeah, sorry, Limburger cheese. Um, I It'll stink out everything in the cheese fridge, so I'm quite hesitant to make it. Uh, but good call. Uh, Tryhard says, uh, can you give a simple recipe without rennet uh, and all the fancy chemicals. I'm really broke. I want to make a good cheese. By the way, your videos started me on cheese making. Um, yeah, so look, um, best um, simple ist pressed cheese without anything except for vinegar or citric acid that you can buy in the shop as cheap as chips is uh, ricotta salata. You just need salt, um, some milk, whole milk, and um, and some citric acid or vinegar. Uh, you coagulate, so you heat the milk up to 98 degrees Celsius uh, just before boiling, don't let it boil. Uh, and then add in your vinegar. Um, there's a recipe on the channel. Um, if Kim gets back in a second, um, she will um, add a link that she probably can't hear because she's at the door. Um, so, yeah, go look on, on the channel for ricotta salata. Very nice cheese, very simple. Um, the salt helps uh, because it's a very bland sort of cheese. Uh, Mickey D says, oh, I've already done that one. Um, I'm all over the place today. Um, Victor says, what is the difference between cutting the milk, cutting the milk with rennet, citric acid, and vinegar? Maybe that means coagulating. Um yeah, there's lots of differences. <clears throat> when you use rennet, it becomes more stable. Uh, if you use citric acid and vinegar, all you're doing is acidifying it. Uh, you won't get a solid curd. You won't get the right curd size to make proper cheese. That's the difference. 
Um, Scoochy and Boo. Oh, you're back. How are you? Um, hi, Gavin. What does it mean when my cheese sinks to the bottom in the brine? I made Gruyere and it sunk. You haven't added enough salt. So when you make your brine, just make sure that you pop in that raw egg. Make sure it's clean. Uh, and make sure the egg floats. The egg has to float in the brine for it to work. Um, make sure it's a fully saturated brine, at least 18% saturation. Uh, and you can achieve that by two litres of water and uh, 450 grams of salt. Um, so in Imperial, that is two quarts and one pound of salt. Um, and that'll give you at least 18%. Um, and there we go. Uh, Mustafa says, can we use whey after making a cheese? Uh, depends on the type of whey. If it's an acid set cheese, uh, then the whey really wouldn't contain much at all. Yes? I've got some. Sorry. That was the assistant. She expect water. She told me to drink some. <coughs> um Yes, if, but if it's a, a rennet set cheese, then the whey is uh, full of all sorts of proteins and stuff that's really good for you. And a lot of the starter bacteria, which is good for your stomach um, and intestines and all that intestinal tract stuff like that. Um, so, yeah, so you can use, in fact, in um, Switzerland, they use whey probably all over the place, but what I know of, um, I think it's called Revel. It's a Swiss whey drink. Uh, and they make it fizzy by, it must be adding CO2 or fermented or something, and apparently it turns out quite good. So, yeah, you can use the whey for all sorts of stuff, making sourdough bread, um, feeding to chickens and pets. And, in fact, in um, uh, in Italy, they when, after the um, Parmesan process or Parmigiano-Reggiano, the whey that is left over, they feed to pigs and make parma ham. So there you go. Um, uh, Team Divine says, uh, do you get a lot of comments from people who randomly just happen to your channel? One of your videos randomly showed up in my recommendations, even though I've never seen a cheese video. Uh, simple answer, yes. I get lots of random comments, especially to the two top ones, which are Cheddar and Quick Mozzarella. All sorts of weird stuff goes on there. I try to uh, vet the comments as best I can, but for those two videos, I've just let them go. Too hard. Too many comments. Um, not that commenting isn't bad. I love reading people's comments. Anyway, so we'll move along to... Kev's got another question. Gavin, can I use non-iodized pink Himalayan salt? Yes, you can. As long as it's the fine stuff. Uh, the coarse stuff is too coarse. I uh, know we we hold two, um, two types of um, Himalayan rock salt on the website, um, but it's made... It, we package it for soap making. Uh, we don't handle it to food grade standards, so um, don't go buying it off the website for cheese making. Um, but it, it is food grade, uh, and yeah, there's no reason why you can't use pink Himalayan rock salt. You'll get a few more minerals in there, obviously, um, than just a salt or um, calcium chloride, or not calcium chloride, uh, sodium chloride, which is salt. You'll get all sorts of other minerals, and your cheese may turn pink a little bit. Okay, um, Kim's been banning people. Um, uh, Mickey TC, what is vintage cheese? Uh, vintage cheese is usually a cheddar varieties uh, that's been aged over a year. Uh, I think it's the technical term for vintage. Um, Charlie says, hi, Gavin. I've been watching your videos for a couple of weeks and imagine it's a bit broad, but do you have a favourite cheese or go to favourites? I'm looking for new ideas. Um, yeah, quick, simple cheese to make uh, for newbies would be, and if, if you want to make a cheddar type variety, try Kefili. Uh, there should be a link um, in the um, uh, in the channel somewhere for Kefili. Uh, very simple cheese. It matures in three weeks. It has a cheddar type profile. Um, it's a nice um, firm rind, but a um, uh, a nice creamy paste in the middle. Uh, so, Charlie, try that out. Um, Roy's there. Hello, Roy. Um, what is paleo gelatin cheese? 
I am seeing sold. Not sure, Bob. Um, not into the whole paleo scene, so I don't kind of track what they're doing there. It's probably something like a vegan cheese, uh, which I haven't got quite into yet. Uh, another request. This is by 30, 30 SB. Um, hi, Gavin. What about Appenzella? Uh, that's another request. So, yep, I've got that down already. Um, Claire says, love your tutorials made. Stilton Parmesan so far. Well, hopefully, Claire, they've turned out okay. And uh, well done. Uh, Kim's got the ricotta salada. Well done, thanks. Graham Strong. G'day, Graham. How are you? Uh, Gavin, I'm confused by one part of the sanitation process. After bleach or steam, you say rinse with cold water, place in a clean tea towel. Um, I actually don't um, rinse with cold water anymore. So uh, with bleaching, you have to. You have to get rid of the... Um, uh, what's it called? You have to get rid of the, the bleach stink that's on there because it actually contaminates. So you got, have to rinse it with fresh water, unfortunately. Bleeping. With steaming, doesn't matter. Um, we're not... Uh, as far as sanitisation goes, we're not sterilising. We're sanitising. We're just making sure that all the gear is clean. It's as clean as possibly can be. Um, so we don't need to sterilise our gear. Putting it on a clean tea towel that's been freshly washed and hung in the sun with no yeast or bacteria, whether that's what you're trying to do. So, no, I haven't recontaminated the gear. I'm sanitising. I'm not sterilising. Uh, great question, though, Graham. Thank you very much for asking. Uh, Roy has said, G'day, Gavin. I found two suppliers commercial. Would you prefer 3% fat unhomogenised or 5% fat homogenised? I'd take the 3% unhomogenized any time. The 5% fat sounds very excessive as far as fat for for um, uh, cheese goes. Um, normal milk is about, it's between 3.8 for Holstein cows up to sometimes uh, 4.5 for um, Jersey cows uh, and Swiss browns have a higher fat content. But five seems a bit ex excessive. In fact, I was looking at a commercial milk here in Australia the other day called uh, Paul's uh, Farmer's Gold. And I looked on the back and I thought, why is the fat content 4.7? Um, and then I looked at the ingredients. It should just say milk, right? Well, it has milk and cream. So they've added cream to it to make it a lot smoother. So I'm thinking that, uh, and it didn't say anything. It did say it was unhomogenized, but if they've added cream to it, um, I don't think you get a very good curd set. I don't know. I'd um, happy to be corrected, but uh, I don't think that milk will be very good here in Australia anyway. Um, PFC Ben W says, I think Limburger cheese is known under the same name as fromage de herve, um, but I'm not sure, um, but I'm sure unknown to you. Would love to watch your reaction for the strange cheese. Uh, very hard to get hold of. Um, Stinky cheeses like um, like that are, are very difficult to get your hands on in the supermarket anyway, um, where I source a fair bit of the commercial cheese that from overseas. It's the only place I can get it. We don't have any markets around here. I'd have to travel an hour into Melbourne to go to some of the, the markets to, uh, to pick up some of that sort of cheese. But look, I'm willing to try it, <laughs> but I've just got to get my hands on some. Scoochie and Boo says... Um, I'm great, thank you. And so grateful for the tip and we'll salt it properly this time. You and Kim are helpful. And it really got me hooked on cheese making and making the most out of my homestead. No problems at all. I'm glad to be of service. Bartek says, praise the cheese lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Let me just have a sip. Okay. Um, Charlie says, thank you so much, Gavin. Have a good one. You're welcome, Charlie. Um, next says, where did the Kefili style cheese originate from? It originated from Wales um, in the United Kingdom uh, is where Kefili comes from. It's a Welsh cheese. The reason they made it with a hard rind is so, this is the way the story goes, is that when the coal or tin miners used to take cheese down, they used to hold the rind with their filthy hands um, and eat the soft paste in the centre of the cheese. Okay, 
Um, so, yeah, Kim's popped in that uh, kefili uh, recipe. Um, Kep says, if I wanted to make my feta low salt brine, will it increase the saltiness? If I wanted to keep my feta in a low salt brine, will it? Um, as long as it's only a 10% brine, you can actually make it a little bit lower. You can go down to 6% uh, before it starts growing mould on it. Um, the reason the brine is so strong, and feta is normally very, very salty. It's just the way it is. It's the way they make that cheese. Um, so, yeah, so it's pretty cool. Oh, Action Bastard, thank you very much. I welcome your warming... What? I love your welcoming personality. I'm not making cheese yet, but I love your outreach and the science behind the process. Thumbs up. Cheers, mate. Um, where are we up to? Oh, yes. Yeah, talking about feta. Um, yeah, so, Kep, the feta is supposed to be salty. It, if it's not salty, it's not feta. Um, real feta in, in, in Greece and, and the Balkan countries, if you want to call it that, um, then, uh, then it's kept in brine for 12 months. You imagine how much salt's in it. I suppose cheese can only absorb so much salt. Um, so that's just the way it is. And thanks again, Action Bass. He says, I plan on enjoying the cheese making process soon. You have, uh, I have you to thank for that desire. Oh, Joe, I hope that's not a bad thing. Um, but thanks for being the person, uh, for being a person I can respect, being a sincerely nice person in the world. That is cruel. Um, there is living this crazy life together. I love you, man, and I hope you do too. Of course. Wouldn't be here otherwise and sharing all this good stuff. Thanks very much. I uh, really pre they appreciate those super chats. Um, Art says, since starting, since I started watching your channel, I've made successfully queso fresco, gouda, uh, manchego, and bel paese. Uh, guess what? Bel, bel paese rocks and is our family favourite. Kim loves, oh, she's already said it. Kim absolutely loves bel paese. It is so simple to make. It's criminal, um, and, you know, it doesn't take very long to mature. It is absolutely delicious. Um, so, yeah, pretty cool. Um, yes, Kim does have fine taste in cheese, seeing she's married to a home cheesemaker. <laughs> um, and next says, I live uh, not too far from Caffili in Wales. Well done. I um, hope you get some nice cheese there. Um, Martin says, why are you live streaming questions about cheese? Uh, why not? Um, I run a cheese channel. That's what you do. Um, Roy says, cheers. Thanks, mate. Uh, Mickey D, in between all the super chats there, says, uh, would you say backpack or not is the best for Parmesan? Um, you look, I have. I've, I've vacuum packed Parmesan after about a month or so of rind development in the cheese fridge, just in a ripening box, not too moist, just the lid off a little bit. Um, but, uh, yeah, it certainly works. And uh, and I vac pack it after about a month because for the wheels we make as home cheese makers, you know, you're using about 10 litres of milk. If you can use 20 litres of milk, fantastic. You'll get a better, uh, bigger cheese. It won't dry out as much in the middle. But for the small parmesans that we make, yeah, you, you've got to either wax them or vacuum pack them after about a month, or they'll just dry out totally, and they'll be hard as a rock. The very first Parmesan I made was rock hard. It was terrible. Uh, great for grating, fantastic flavour and smell, but it was just too hard, and you couldn't um, shave it. You couldn't even shave it. That's how hard it was, So, unfortunately. Um, okay, so we're down to Kim's got something. What's it? Cornish pasties also have a thick crust around them, for the miners to hold whilst eating. Very good, Kim. Yes, that was one of the reasons why Cornish parsies have thick pastry. And they're delicious. Kim and I have actually visited Cornwall, and uh, which is uh, a very nice part of the world, if anybody's been there. And, um, yes, we went to the pasty shop on the main street of Tintagel in Cornwall and uh, had a lovely pasty or two. Very nice. They're big too. Uh, Martin says... Oh, Martin, stop it. Why am I live streaming questions about cheese? I am confused because I am. It's just the way it is. Um, Kim said, put in uh, Bell Paisy cheese. Um, uh, the link, fantastic. Thank you, honey. Uh, Claire said, um, 
IVAC pack, um, Parmesan after brine. Will it be spoiled? No, it won't. You should let it air dry a bit. Um, it needs to have a natural rind for the flavours to develop, Claire. So uh, as long as you air dried it so it was touch dry, um, it probably will be okay. It still develop the flavours. It just won't have that harder rind, that's all. Um, Action Bastard says, do you like pairing cheese with food or wine? Yeah, I do. M more, um, and this may seem funny, but um, cheese does pair with beer, actually, a lot better um, than uh, on a cheese platter. So your stronger, your fresher cheeses, uh, nice light, uh, light lager or um, pilsner, um, as far as you get up to the, the, the blues and stuff like that, go really well with a um, um, an ale and then move on to the the stronger cheeses uh, like cheddar, vintage cheddar, that sort of stuff or any English um, cheddar type cheeses and then um, you go higher up to the porters uh, and then to the stouts for really strong cheese, really stinky or strong cheese. I like to pair beers. Uh, wines are fine as well. It's a little bit harder. Um, I know that a lot of people do pair wines with cheese on a cheese platter. Um, I'm more of a, a beer man when it comes to that sort of thing, um, as far as pairings go. Uh, but there are lots of places. There's actually some places in Melbourne. Um, oh, I can't remember the name of the shop. I haven't visited it yet. But there's a place that just serves cheese and wine, and they have a little board comes out, and they have a wine per cheese in a row. And that's what you taste them with. So pretty flash. Can't remember the name of the place. It's in Melbourne somewhere. Um, uh, Mickey D says, Kim, I think that was to prevent cyanide poisoning. Well, it probably was too, Mick. <laughs> um, try hard method if I don't have method if I don't have a cheese press. Uh, any weight you can get your hands on uh, if you don't have a cheese press uh, to press the cheese firm enough. Depends on the type of cheese. Uh, so, you know, what I do for um, things that need only a light pressing, I use uh, a, a, a milk bottle. So I use a two-litre milk bottle uh, that I've filled up with water and I've cleaned, uh, run boiling water over the outside of the milk bottle, um, just from the kettle. Uh, make sure that's clean. And then I just pop that on top of the feta baskets and that presses the feta. So that's a good way to press um, simple cheeses or put them between two cheese boards and lay a couple of bottles of filled up uh, uh, milk, empty milk bottles that have been filled with water. Um, so remember that one litre of water equals one kilogram of weight. Um, so two litres obviously equals two kilograms. So Put the, the, the milk bottles, lie them down. Don't stand them up. They'll fall off. Lie them down. You've probably seen in some of the videos. If you look at the, uh, I think the paneer video, that's I've used a very rudimentary press there. Um, so that uh, hopefully helps. Try hard. Um, Asman says, what is the weight of the largest cheese you've made with my press? Uh, and which mould did you use? I, I think the biggest one is 1.5 kilos. And that was with, 12, yeah, 12 litres of milk. Uh, so that was a rather large cheese. And I used the the mould that I have, the 165 millimetre mould, um, which I, I, I favour because it's a very versatile mould. I use it all the time. I think that's six inches across, 165 millimetres. Pretty close. Anyway, um, the rabbit slays back. Um, nearly missed me. Um uh, Greetings from St. Charles, Montana. I think MO stands for Montana. Um, Lucy, hi, Gavin. Can I flavour mozzarella? Like with roasted garlic or would it disturb the formation of the curd? I figure the best time is to add after the curd starts to form. I actually haven't seen any varieties of mozzarella with um, anything added to it. It'd be very difficult. For a stretch curd cheese... You're trying to get the string, the stringiness and the stretchiness. Um, so adding in any flavours or anything like that may be quite difficult. Uh, I don't quite know how you would do it. I haven't given it much thought. Uh, for other cheeses, no problems. You add 
flavors and the sort of herbs and spices um, into the curds just before you press it. So you mill it in through the curds and then press it that way. Um, okay, Marcy says, how long do you think a store-bought unopened packet of Gouda or Gruyere would be acceptable to eat? The packages look as if they're pristine the day they were bought about two years ago. I'd eat them. No problems at all. If cheese is already, if it's in wax or, or what have you, or it's backpacked, it'll last for a long, long time. You keep it at those very low temperatures. You know, cheese has been up, aged up to 10 years. I've, they've even seen cheese they found in Chinese emperor's tombs, like a thousand years old, and it's still okay. Well, they reckon it is anyway. I don't know how many. I'd be pretty, pretty strange to see the archaeologist that tries the cheese, but... Look, no problems at all. I would certainly eat it. Two years old, piece of cake. Um, Kim, milk the cow. There you go. Might be somewhere we'll visit Kim on our uh, visit to the city. That would be lovely um, after the um, the mould festival. We might be all cheesed out by then, but we'll see what happens. Um, what's my favourite uh, beer, cheese, soup, sauce, soup? Oh, huh? oh cheese and favourite type of beer. Um, I'm quite partial to, uh, may sound like a compromise here, but Kefili, uh with a homebrew beer that I make called Aztec Gold, which is basically a cerveza uh, that has extra malt added to it. I do brew, brew my own beer. Mind you, I haven't done it for a while, but um, they're, a, they're one of my favourite pairings. It's Kefili with um, Aztec Gold that I made. Very nice. Um, Okay, uh, Roy has said, Gavin, um, have I got it right that cheese in wax can still breathe? And if so, are my other cheeses safe from my Stilton? Yes, they are safe. Um, cheese in wax, um, it doesn't breathe all that lot, all that much. Um, we're trying to make an airtight type seal. Uh, some people say it does. Look, if you add two or three layers, there's no breathing going on there. So they are safe from your Stilton. Um, uh, Mickey D said, made myself a Dutch press, which works very well. Simple to make. Yes, they are. That's just a, a simple, simple lever press. Um, and uh, they work very, very well. Um, a lot of people use them throughout the world. Uh, in fact, if you go to littlegreencheese.com and search for cheese press, you'll see that I did a blog post on a whole bunch of presses that people have made um around the world uh, and sent their photos into me so i thought i'd do a blog post and uh and put it up there so people can see the different types of designs and all that sort of stuff um as well as the uh, you know the very simple uh cheese press that we sell with the spring seems to work all right uh tracer oh sorry ken d what's my favorite cheese all of them uh tracer do you like nachos yes i do um geordie's back hello how are you um, M.O. Missouri, oh, not Montana, sorry, Missouri. I didn't know. The two-letter abbreviations for states in the U.S. aren't well taught in schools here in Australia. Um, Ken, if you if you could be a type of cheese, what would you want to be? I'm sorry, I'm not answering it. Um, Rebecca, hello, Gavin. I uh, don't really have a question. Just wanted to say your channel is very interesting and heartwarming. I usually watch while I work late. Keep on doing what you're doing. Thank you, Rebecca. Appreciate it. Um, wind out too. Yes, we will be wind. There's going to be wind at the Mold Festival, apparently. So we've booked a night in the city, so we don't have to travel very far. Catch a tram home or something. Marcy, thank you so much. I've been hesitant to throw them away, but has but hesitant to eat them without expert opinion. Uh, thank you so much. Yeah, give them a go. I reckon they'll be all right. If they're on the nose, if they smell bad, don't eat them. But if they smell like cheese and you just out of their packet, they'll be fine. And thanks for the super chat, Marcy. Appreciate it. <clears throat> um, uh, Tracer Dom, is England my cheesy? Don't understand. Um, uh, Adam, what is the best cheese for beginners? Uh, Kim's put a post up there somewhere about um, best cheeses and that sort of stuff. Kim's deleting lots of people. Oh, that's no, just one person. That's fine. Um, have you ever considered... Peter says, have you ever... <coughs> I'll start again. 
Have you ever considered making a washed rind cheese using your homemade beer? You know what, Peter? You've read my mind. I was thinking that the ochre that I'm making at the moment, or St. Paul Inn or St. Salot, Salute, uh, Port Salute, um, that red washed rind, um, I know of a cheesemaker in Canada, um, Ian Trower, um, who just won a, um, a prize at the American Cheese Society for one of his um, uh, cheeses. And I'm pretty sure that that is one of the cheeses that he makes in his repertoire is a beer-washed cheese. So first, initially, he washes with brine and uh, a little bit of um, Brevibacterium linens. Uh, but then after a while, he washes with just beer. Um, and it makes a very interesting and a very tasty cheese. Um, so, yeah, I have. In fact, I actually dreamed, this is a coincidence or what, I dreamed about washing my beer with, uh, washing my beer, washing my cheese with beer last night. So I was thinking of giving it a go. So, yeah, why not? I've got some home, I've got some um, some darker beer. I think it's a, um, it's a really dark ale, and that will probably go down quite well. Um, cause you need a beer with a, a bit of meat to it, if that makes sense. Um, okay. So where are we up to? Um, Adam, Adam says, what is the hardest cheese to make? Uh, oh, it depends on your experience. The first cheese is usually the hardest cheese to make, um, because you've never made cheese before. So you don't know what you're up for. Um, the hardest cheese that I've made, I would say, would be the provolone. It's the waiting. Waiting for the curd to acidify was painful, really was. But it turned out to be a lovely little cheese. In fact, it's nearly all gone because Kim's been snacking on the provolone um, without me knowing. Oh, a light just went off. I've run out of batteries on one of my lights. Must mean we're close to the air. Oh, it is. 52 minutes. Hopefully the other light won't go and we'll be in total darkness. Um, but anyway, so I've got a few more questions before we go today. Um, uh, would you make nachos? What cheese or cheeses would you use to top it? Um, for nachos, there's a great Mexican cheese called... Oh, goodness me, what's it called? Uh, Cartier? No, Cotier. Cotier. Uh, Cotija, I think, is how you pronounce it. Great cheese to use for nachos. It won't particularly melt, uh, but cheddars will melt, that sort of stuff. Um, so use that for the melty bit. But to top your nachos with one of the best cheeses I've tried, try Cotija. Very nice. Uh, Daniel. Um, hello, Gavin. I really enjoy your videos. Thanks, Daniel. <coughs> oh, that'll fix it. Um, Rebecca says, um, what made you start making homemade produce? Have you always been doing it or did you start recently? Um, reason, you can blame Al Gore for this. Um, <laughs> I watched An Inconvenient Truth, um, wanted to lower our environmental footprint. So we started making or growing and making our own produce. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't get my hands on raw milk. So because it's banned over here in Australia. In, Victoria and you know, banned from selling it, the farmer's selling it. Um, so I have to deal with unhomogenized. So I, I want to make um, foods that I know um, all of the ingredients in, basically. Um, so it was a continuation. We lowered our carbon footprint, put solar panels on, solar hot water, insulation, double glazing. So we hardly spend any money on heating or cooling, so it's really good. Um, and a whole bunch of other lifestyle changes as well. Uh, but anyway, that's... That's another story. Go and read my blog called The Greening of Gavin. Uh, go and search for The Greening of Gavin, Rebecca, and you'll see the entire journey, a uh, whole seven or eight years worth of blog posts there. Fantastic stuff. Um, Action Bastard, in continuation uh, to the beer wash cheeses, what is your favourite fermented cheeses? Um, I don't have any uh, fermented cheese favourites. <coughs> Um, I don't think I've tried them. Anyway, uh, Joy. Oh, hello, Joy. So happy I was able to see your show. Thanks, uh, Gavin and Kim. Enjoyed it immensely. I'm always looking forward to seeing your cheese making and tasting videos. Uh, thanks, Joy. Appreciate you joining us, 
Marcy says, don't forget to hit thumbs up. Correct. All right, we're at uh, 55 minutes into the show. Uh, I'm going to wrap it up now, ladies and gentlemen, or so curd nerds and curd nerdettes. Um, so let's have a look. One final question from uh, Mick. Uh, cheese curds calling out for help. We'll catch you next week, guys. Thanks for the show. Thanks, Mick. Appreciate it. Um, so just a few things. If you want to um, support the show, don't forget that you can support via Patreon. Uh, that's an ongoing um, subscription. However, you can stop as early as you want. Um, I think it's as little as $2 US, um, and it's a monthly subscription thing. It helps the channel grow, um, helps us put these on, helps me charge the batteries for the lights, <laughs> um, and that sort of stuff, equipment we use that money for. Um, also, don't forget that, you know, if you really want to, there's enough time for another Super Chat, if you like. Thanks for all the lovely ones that um, people have put out there today. Really appreciate those. Um, and uh, you can also see us on Facebook. So not only um, that one over there. Ooh, where is it? Over there. Uh, Little Green Cheese. Uh, there's also littlegreenworkshops.com. And if you want to buy any good stuff um, like this wonderful cup and the, some of the T-shirts. Oh, there we go. Certified Curd Nerd. Um, cups and aprons with the same logo and all that sort of stuff. Um, pop over to our merch store, um, which Kim will have a link somewhere. Cafe Press, there we go. Uh, Cheeseman.tv, well done. And uh, if you want to hear any other interesting audio, cheese making audio, I do a podcast, which I've been a bit slack on. It's a uh, Little Green Cheese podcast. Just go to littlegreencheese.com there in the uh, description below and uh, check out. It's about 64 episodes of all very interesting stuff. Uh, and don't forget, if you want to buy any equipment or stuff, uh, check out littlegreenworkshops.com.au. Anyway, thanks for watching, everybody. Um, appreciate you joining. It's not a show without you and without your questions uh, every week. Um, fantastic show. Thank you so much. Well, g'day, curd nerds. G'day, curd nerds. Well, 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 